Yo, One Piece is absolutely ridiculous right now. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but is it even possible for us to get any more law than we're getting right now? I'm not so sure. But anyways, I'm guessing since you've all clicked on this video, you've read the chapter. And boy, oh boy, what a chapter it was. So in this video, we're going to take a look at One Piece Manga Chapter 1024. And I'll give some passing comments on things that were discussed in this chapter. But just before I get into all of that, for all of those who've subscribed to the channel, welcome back. And for all of those who are new here, it's me, Mr. Premps. And One Piece 1024 is out. And once again, it is amazing. But as usual, if you're watching this video and like anything I've had to say, then make sure you leave a like on the video. And also, to all of you that are new, Make sure you subscribe as I try to bring you all One Piece chapter reviews on a weekly basis. But without wasting any more time, let's get into this chapter. And the chapter starts off on the second floor of Onigashima. And there are a number of these pirates just passing out and foaming at the mouth. So very evidently they're passing out from somebody's use of Conqueror's Haki. Now Oda however is hilarious because he draws this silhouette of Usopp in the background with Usopp lying once again as per usual as he talks about men with no resolve being unable to stand before him and that his name is Usohachi the man that took down two of the beast pirates and by beast pirates I mean Tobiropo and I'm sure he's referring to page one in Ulti here and to be honest this is just typical Usopp comedy from Oda and I was really waiting for him to do this again since the god Usopp stuff in Dressrosa was hilarious. We do however find out that this is likely to be happening because Big Mum is fighting on this floor, which really raises my excitement as to what's happening with her, Kid and Law. Particularly as we know that Kid is at a slight disadvantage due to what's happening with Killer and Hawkins. But I'll discuss that at a complete different point. We go on to listen in on a conversation between Nami and Frankie and they're talking through a Denden Mushi and trying to identify what's happening with Luffy. But neither of them can get through to Luffy and the last that they had heard was what came from Momo. However this whole conversation results in Frankie telling them to all come downstairs and help out as the enemies are trying to get to the live floor. And as we know Sanji and Zoro are on the live floor fighting and we don't want them getting interrupted. And another hilarious thing that we got here was Frankie barking orders at some of the heart pirates that made it to Onigashima, which includes Beppo's crew. And Beppo is like, we're in an equal alliance, you can't be giving us orders. And the reason I say this is hilarious is because we know that they're in an alliance, but the Straw Hat pirates are just really the leaders of this and so much more competent. But moving on, we go to the third floor and this is where we see Brooke carrying Robin due to Robin basically passing out after defeating Black Maria. But one thing I almost forgot was the fact that Black Maria basically set the whole place ablaze and the fire that she set just seems to be getting worse and all the allies realise that they can't be on this third floor anymore and they must go to the live floor. Now at this point Brooke checks in with Jinbei who's on the fourth floor and it appears that he's with the kid pirates such as Heat and Wire and he tells them how bad the third floor has gotten and that Jinbei must rush down whilst there's still time. Jinbei acknowledges this but he goes on to ask who is fighting Kaido as of course none of them know that Yamato's up there. And in the midst of all of this we do go to the life floor and although we don't get to see Zoro and Sanji in their battles we do get to see Kawamatsu and it appears he's just out there doing his thing slicing up a bunch of fodder beast pirates. And even though we do get to see this and I think it's cool, I am a bit upset as being a scabbard I would have expected Kawamatsu to have taken on someone of some real significance but it just seems like he's doing the bare minimum. But anyway I digress because now we get the juicy stuff as we go on to the top of Onigashima where we have Yamato fighting Kaido. And before we get into this I just want to say how impressed I am by Yamato because she's been kicking it with Kaido up there for a minute now and she's really holding her own and honestly we get a fantastic battle up here and even a backstory from Yamato which I think is really significant but the first thing that we do get to see 
it's Yamato attacking Kaido and this attack is named Ringing Arrow in which Kaido actually just deflects and attacks Yamato with effectively an identical attack but his attack is named Thunderous Arrow and one thing I must highlight for you all is that neither of these two are holding back they're both in their hybrid forms and we find out just how serious this battle is as Kaido's attack effectively pushes Yamato back and she crashes right down and as she gets up she screams to Kaido that he's going to kill her and Kaido being Kaido agrees he tells her that he's not playing around and that she should have been prepared for war if she insisted on carrying Odin's name and Yamato on the other hand seems so clueless as she responds what is so wrong with admiring Odin and that she was captivated by Odin and this is what we've been waiting for because now we go into Yamato's backstory and this backstory starts about 20 years ago with Yamato chained to a tree-like structure unable to move however with many of Kaido's subordinates all passed out and foaming at the mouth and this is where Kaido first learned that his daughter Yamato possessed Conqueror's Haki as young as I'd say 6 or 8 and apologies for not checking beforehand but I've literally just read the chapter and have not done the research but Kaido is infuriated by a young Yamato just spouting nonsense all of this Odin stuff just ain't sitting right with Kaido and so he tells her he's going to put her in a cave for a month to cool off and reconsider herself oh and I shouldn't forget Kaido's been starving her now I don't know for exactly how long but she's really hungry now in this cave we learn that there are some master swordsmen there and they're being kept there because Kaido wants to break their will and he wants them to join him and to be fair looking at the three of them I'm sure a lot of us can assume who one of them is but Kaido has put his daughter in danger here putting her in a cave with swordsmen that absolutely despise him and then after starving all of them he puts in one meal with the aim that they'd all fight for that one meal but what we do get here is the complete opposite of Kaido's expectation as they give the meal to Yamato they tell her that samurai do not get hungry as she holds the moment ever so dear to her and explains that she'd remember this for the rest of her life and she goes on to ask one of the samurais if she can be a samurai too and he's like of course and when she asks who he was he refers to himself as nobody important but man I've never seen such a spitting image of Zoro ever before I am almost 100 million percent sure that this individual is Zoro's father and if not he's some sort of relative at the very least the young Yamato then whips out Odin's logbook saying she wants to read it all but there are a lot of big words and we find out that these samurai are in shock that she's got the logbook but they also read the logbook with her in the time that they spent together in this cave and after 10 days in this cave with all of them realizing that Kaido would really leave his daughter to die these samurai leave the future in Yamato's hands they say that they're going to make their contribution to ensuring that she survives as they pick up their swords and break out of this cave and I'm not gonna lie even the pose of this one samurai who I believe to be Zoro's relative makes it a spitting image of Zoro and if you're asking me who it is it's definitely Ushimaru but as we see them break out the cave we come back to the present and Yamato remembering the sacrifices that they made for her freedom and that Kaido not only stole her freedom but the freedom of Wano she wants to know why she adores these men that believed in her and accepted her and clearly Kaido didn't and still doesn't as Kaido refers to her as an immature brat and tells her there are no easy answers in this world and this all happens before her and Kaido have a conqueror's hacky clash in mid-air I must say and we see that beautiful panel of black lightning striking each other and that brings the chapter to an end and there's no break next week but wow what a chapter this Yamato backstory is what does it for me though we've almost had it in two parts where we find out how she gets the logbook gets the adoration for Odin 
and then it's being punished by her father to stop spouting that nonsense. Inadvertently awakens her conqueror's haki and then is put in a cave with these samurai in which I'm sure we're going to find out that one of them has a serious link to one of our straw hats in Zoro. Only to bring us to today and this fight against Kaido and this is absolutely fantastic. The chapter is fire and once again I am a satisfied fan. But let me know what you all think. What was your favourite part of the chapter? And do you think that this nobody is of course Ushimaru? And could this be Zoro's dad? Let me know down in the comments. And as usual, if you like anything I've had to say, please make sure you leave a like on the video. And if you like your weekly One Piece reviews, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss out when I drop more reviews just like this. Say...